Talk to you soon. Time for another in our ongoing series, Nothing to See Here. On Sunday, mountain biker Rab Wardell won the Scottish Cross Country Championship, the National Championship. On Monday, the champ went on BBC Scotland to talk about his victory. Talk me through it then. How do you contend with three punctures in a race like this and go on to lift well, the gold medal? Unfortunately, I'm a, probably a little bit too, <laughs> too well practiced in managing <laughs> punctures, but uh, no, it was a. Uh, yeah, it was. It was a. Uh, to be honest, it was a bit of a disaster, but no, I just, just had to, to, to keep on trucking and, and keep racing and I guess still felt confident that I'd be able to, to catch the leaders and, and win, so yeah, just give them my best shot. So a tremendous come from behind win on the Sunday. On the Monday, he's on the BBC talking about it, full of life there. Then he goes home and dies. Headline from the Daily Record, mountain biker Rab Wardell dies just two days after winning Scottish Championship. He went into cardiac arrest on Tuesday morning, less than 48 hours after winning a national championship. His poor, devastated girlfriend, Commonwealth Games and Olympics champion Katie Archibald, uh, tried to revive him, but she was unable to, as she subsequently tweeted... I still don't understand what's happened. If this is real, why he'd be taken now so healthy and happy. Rab Wardell was 37, which is no age to die. Nothing to see here in cycling and nothing to see here in rugby from the Huddersfield Daily Examiner. Tributes to Halifax rugby player Ben Ben, who has died suddenly, aged 30. Ben Ben from Siddle died suddenly on Monday, leaving his family and friends completely shocked. The 30-year-old dad played competitive rugby for a host of local league and union teams, including Huddersfield Giants and Bradford Bulls. Nothing to see here in rugby, nothing to see here in cycling, nothing to see here in football. Uh, from the Daily Mirror, quote, tributes have poured in after the sudden death of West Belfast footballer Molly White. Uh, Molly White was 20 and a rising star in women's football. Uh, nothing to see here in boxing. Also from the Belfast Telegraph, a young boxer who passed away suddenly had an infectious smile and kind-hearted nature, his West Belfast club said. St Michael's Boxing Club led tributes to 19-year-old Dominic Oscar after his death last Thursday. Nothing to see here in cycling, rugby, football, boxing, 37 years old, 30 years old, 20 years old, 19. Fit, healthy, in the peak of condition, and dead. But nothing to see here. A few months ago, I thought there might be something to see here in all these sportsmen suddenly dying, and I'm being investigated by Ofcom over it, so I certainly wouldn't want to make that mistake again. Nevertheless, as we've reported, in the Canadian province of Alberta, the leading cause of death is not cancer or dementia, but cause unknown. Uh, death from unknown causes. This was uh, how it's... You see the way? It was just 500 in 2019. Two years later, it's 3,500. Cause unknown is now spreading to other provinces, including my own native Sod, Ontario. On Saturday, Rhea Vanort from Hanalton was jet skiing on Lake Ontario with old friends she hadn't seen since the COVID came along. The friends turned away and then looked back and saw Ms. Van Oort's body floating in the lake, also sudden death. She was 32 and a paramedic, which I mention because it means certain things can be inferred. She leaves a six-year-old daughter. OK, let's move from the case studies to the big picture. Here is a table from a new report. I expect you're wondering who it's by, some crazy far-right QAnon conspiracy theorist? No, it's the US Society of Actuaries, an actuary for the benefit of you Twitter trolls, is a person who calculates insurance risk. And if you don't do that accurately, you wind up paying out a lot more money than you ever intended to. So let's look at Table 5.7 from the Society of Actuaries showing excess deaths in America broken down by age. Focus on that uh, red bit. Uh, we'll come to that in a minute. At the left-hand side of the table from 2020, the spring and summer of COVID, 
It's not good. You can see excess deaths of 15 and 16 percent. Thank goodness all those vaccines came along. Eh? But then look at the third quarter of 2021. Twice as many dead 35 to 44 year olds as there should be. Uh, and actually almost as lousy numbers for those in their late 20s and early 50s. So look at that, excess mortality for 25 to 54-year-olds, young and middle-aged Americans. Anything going on in the third quarter of 2021? Well, that was actually the peak of vaccine mandates in America, uh, where in a variety of occupations, from paramedics uh, to Manhattan waitresses in diners, you had to get jabbed to keep your job. And oddly enough, that coincides with massive excess mortality among people in the prime of life. But altogether now, correlation is not causation. That's the dispositive line there. OK, we've seen a similar picture in the European Union. Here's the latest report from Eurostat. They're keeping it simple uh, here. The pale yellow is for countries with the lowest excess deaths. Uh, so that's like Hungary, where deaths are actually down, 0.3%. Uh, Slovakia, deaths are down 1.9%. Bulgaria, 7.9%. So Bulgaria's got a, the opposite problem from most places. It's got excess life. Uh, you'll scan the Bulgar papers in vain for sudden death from cause unknown. Whereas that dark maroon there... Those are the worst countries with excess mortality over 15 percent. Estonia, 16.2 percent. Spain, 16.7 percent. Portugal, excess mortality of 23.9 percent. More dead bodies than usual. I'll tell you what, just for fun, boys and girls, let's also take a look at vaccination rates in Europe. Uh, this is the uh, rundown of countries. So look at that. The least vaccinated country in Europe is Bulgaria. And they also have the least excess mortality. Mm. And the most vaccinated country in Europe is Malta, which isn't included in the excess mortality stats. So let's go to the second most vaccinated country in Europe, Portugal. And they have the highest excess mortality in you. So the lowest country with the lowest vaccination rate has the lowest excess mortality, and the country with the highest vaccination rate has the highest excess mortality. But altogether now, correlation is not causation. So what's going on? Uh, Jamie Jenkins is our stats man, formerly the man who crunched the big health numbers at the Office of National Statistics. And uh, these, these figures, these European numbers and these American numbers are similar to what we're seeing in the UK too. Middle-aged mm. people, young people dying young. Yeah, and then a cause for alarm. I think with the, the European numbers, I think that the, the map that was shown was for mm. June. I think Bulgaria did actually start seeing large numbers of excesses earlier on in the year. Mm. So I think if you look over the longer period, you will see Bulgaria having some mm. of those excesses. But the general trend of what we're seeing is pretty much what we've got in the UK. And, and we talked, I think, recently, Mark, about the excess deaths. And I think some of the other parts of the media are starting to wake up on this mm. because we're starting to see newspapers starting to cover it. And even the likes of the BBC are starting to talk a little bit about it. So you seem to be setting a trend here that people are actually looking to talk about this. Now, I've been looking at the numbers myself over the last week. Remember, I think about a month ago, Mark, we had the ONS monthly figures right. for June. And the only cause of death that was above average when you compare to the five years and new age standardised was kind of cause unknown. It was those symptoms, signs and ill-defined conditions. We've had the latest set of figures for July now of this month, exactly the same again. So another month and cause unknown is the only cause in the UK or England and Wales where we're seeing deaths above that five-year average. Now, that's if you take the whole of 2022 together, that's what we're seeing there as well. Now, if you take the overall picture Mark, mm. across the country, we are seeing about a thousand deaths more per week. But part of that is that if we look at the population profile, we have got more older people now than what we had back in 2015, 2019. So I've, I've kind of crunched all the numbers there yeah. and looked at it in terms of if we apply the death rate, so let's assume your chance of dying now is exactly the same as pre-pandemic. Mm. What you then find is that it explains some of the excess, but not all of it. And if you take COVID deaths out, Mark, and you look at the year so far, we've got fewer older people dying if you take COVID out. That's mm. not unsurprising, as we've talked about before. Yeah. 
a lot of people die before the pandemic. But this year, from the ages of 30 up to 59, we are seeing more people dying for non-COVID reasons than what you would expect when you apply the death rates before the pandemic. Now, that's the kind of thing that's concerning. And all those tragic deaths you talk about, obviously, thoughts go to their family. That's what we need an investigation on. Yeah, so that matches the... Because the way the ONS does it, it's 30 years to 59. But that's, again, like those American actuaries where it's 25 to 54. Are you surprised that... Deaths before your time in countries where uh, life expectancy is 77, 78, 79, uh, and uh, we're not interested in why people are dropping dead between 30 and 59? And we should be interested because we had every single day, you know, for, for two years or more, mm. how many deaths within 28 days of a positive test. BBC, ITV, Sky would be covering it. I've not seen hardly any news reports of it at all. No, you, you, you made that point that the, the people who had these like tickers, they had graphics made up to show how many people had died from COVID every week, uh, aren't interested now that it's young and middle aged people dying in huge numbers. Every no, week. and the important thing here, Mo, as well, is that if you actually look at the age profile mm. and then you look at excess death, there's another metric you can look mm. at is the number of years lost of life. Yeah. So, obviously, somebody who dies in their 30s, who may have survived until the age of mm. 70, 80, there's 40 years of life uh, lost. If mm. somebody dies of, say, COVID a few years before they're kind of what you'd expect them to die up, there's less lives lost. Now, there are some factors that we can look at. So, I've been looking at the, the Office for Health and Disparities. There used mm. to be Public Health England. They kind of split that off. And they've been looking at kind of what causes might be behind some mm. of these excesses. And there is a bit of a trend that we're starting to see here now, Mark. We're seeing higher than average deaths for the time of year in terms of heart issues, which includes heart attacks, heart disease. Mm. We've got diabetes deaths up as well, and some stroke deaths as well. So we've got these common things. And the last three or four months, we have been seeing the NHS in crisis. We've got 13,000 people now in beds in England. They can't be discharged. So we've got a situation now, Mark, where they can't be discharged into the community because there's not enough care. The government sacked a load of care workers last year. That won't have helped that. Mm. So if somebody goes into A&E, they're in a bed. They can't be transferred to the wider hospital. What then happens is an ambulance turns up. Mm. They can't just put the patient into the A&E because the beds are blocked up. So some poor soul then has an heart attack or a stroke. They phone for an ambulance and there is left fewer ambulances for them to go. Well, there are people who say that it's because of the problems in the NHS and certainly there are a lot of people dying at home. But uh, And uh, they're saying it's because people didn't, uh, get their cancer appointments during the COVID, so their stage two cancer is now stage four. But in fact, there isn't a lot of increase in cancer deaths. It's more this uh, sudden adult death syndrome type stuff. Yep, there's that and the heart issues. The cancer numbers, actually, if you do compare them, mm. you're right, they're not actually ex over excess, mm. and that might be something that we see coming down the line. And, and there are a number of other factors that we need to obviously look at. You've, you've talked about kind of adverse reactions to the vaccination. Uh, you've got mm. lots of people have had COVID in the country as well, Mark, and we do know that having a COVID infection can cause circulatory issues. And kind of the main thing as well that doesn't really get talked about is the government in, in part of all of this. Yeah. They told everybody, stay home, protect the NHS, save lives. Yeah. People who may have little problems with themselves, they can't diagnose themselves at home. People are dying from home. Yeah. Are they staying at home? Have they stayed at home for the last two years? And then they're suddenly dying because they haven't been diagnosed with anything. Well, let, let me ask you this just finally, Jamie. I, I started with that uh, statistic, you know, from Alberta, which is very, one of the wealthiest places on the planet. And uh, the leading cause of death in Alberta is unknown cause. Unknown cause, as you've said, is making huge strides elsewhere. Is it normal? In a, for someone who's been in health statistics, is it normal for the leading cause of death in your jurisdiction to be cause unknown? Well, that isn't normal. And, and in the UK, what we're seeing, it's not the leading cause. It's still about eight, but it is on an increase, as we said. Mm, it's going up the hit parade in an Albertan direction. It's going up. And the thing is, a lot of these deaths, if, if there's a sudden death, they should mm. go to a coroner. There should be a full investigation. Then you should identify the cause. Whether or not they're doing that in other countries to the, kind of the extent they do in here is a thing. But what's coming down the line, Mark, is the winter. And you've been talking about the mm. cost of living crisis. Mm. We know... We saw excess deaths potentially will go up because people won't put the heating on because they can't afford it. Mm -hmm. So the government's policies of kind of lockdowns and then the cost of living crisis mm -hmm. off the back of it, that's one thing to look at over the winter is are we going to see excess deaths because people can't afford to put the heating on?
Well, that, that, that would be amazing. It might be that just the spring and summer we'll look back on as the good old days of uh, excess death. Thank you very much, uh, Jamie. Great to see you in the studio.